let's make a confession of faith. Jesus is a Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. The title of today's message is Prepare the Way for the Lord. Uh, you know, in many things, when you uh, prepare for something that you enjoy, it's a joyful time. You know, uh, when I cook sometimes, knowing that I'm cooking for the loved ones and for our friends and guests, you know, I like the process of just cooking and preparing, just knowing that the people will enjoy my food. I know that sometimes uh, seeing my children, they know they're going to someplace fun, right? And uh, just packing the, the bag and just knowing that they're going to go to this fun place. For them, it's an enjoyable time just thinking about it. But at the same time, when, you, when, you're, when you're prepared for something that you're not so enjoying, right? uh, it's not so enjoyable, is it? Right? I tell my kids, get up in the morning, let's prepare to go to school. And what, how do they move? Uh, <laughs> barely get out of the way. Uh, mom comes, hey, wake up, let's eat. Still in the bed. Five minutes later, wake up, let's eat. Still in the bed. And the voice goes higher and higher, <laughs> getting angrier and angrier. Um, you know, Preparing the way for the Lord is today's title. God says he wants you to, for you to truly be prepared to be used by Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We are right now, is worship time, is a time we are being prepared so that we can be used as a disciple to save the 70 disciples in the field. Amen? Amen. This is a time when you need to truly enjoy this worship. It's a time when you truly enjoy where God is preparing you. So that you can be used as a true disciple for Jesus Christ to save the 237 nations and the 5,000 tribes. Amen? Amen? Therefore, you need to conform before, uh, right now, it's a, you need to truly uh, check right now what kind of platform I'm standing. You know, when, when God says he's preparing you, he's simply helping you to realize the blessings he has already given to you. Amen? Amen. Well, when I say, don't misunderstand today's title, when I say prepare, it some, sounds kind of like you got to do something. No, it's really realizing what God has already given to you by grace. Amen? The platform in which you are standing is the platform of the gospel. Platform of the gospel. Gospel, the good news, as we confess that Jesus is a Christ, answer to all the problem, that's the platform you are standing on. What kind of problem, what kind of issue in your life can break the platform of the gospel? Nothing can. And that's where you're standing. That's what you need to confirm every day. In that platform of the gospel, that's why we must have assurance. Assurance. What is the key assurance you need to have that starts everything is the assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation is the very foundation of our Christian faith. You're shaken upon the assurance of salvation. It means everything else is going to be shaken. Sometimes we just think of assurance of salvation as, are you sure you can go to heaven? I think it's so much more than that. It's not just knowing that I'll die one day and go to heaven. No. Assurance of salvation is talking about your perfect, absolute identity. Amen? That's what assurance is. Assurance of salvation means what? You have been saved from the depth of sin, curse, and condemnation into the blessing of Emmanuel. Amen? It's assurance of salvation knowing that God is with me with the perfect answer, with the perfect guidance who will lead me to live my life for the glory of God. That is the assurance of salvation. Every waking moment, find true thanksgiving because of salvation. I tell you this all the time. Thanksgiving because of salvation. Confidence because of, of the gospel God has given you. Happiness of enjoying these things every single day. That's how you need to start your day every single moment. What kind of gospel platform is also included in this is the assurance of guidance. Gospel is an absolute answer. Amen? Amen. That means this Holy Spirit is with you will absolutely guide you. I mean, I told you this, whenever um, if my, my children act, they're scared in any way, what do they do? They come and hold my hand. They come and hold my hand. If they, they go to somewhere, I was at a wedding yesterday with my daughter, and bunch of, she's kind of shy. She's very shy. So when new people come and like, oh, hi, she's scared. <laughs> she, she hides behind me. 
So whenever she feels like not comfortable, what does she do? She comes in, holds on to my leg or holds on to my arm. Right? When she's with me, she doesn't have to worry. When my, ch- my children are with me, they don't have to worry. When do I worry about the children when they're not with me? When they're on their own. When you're receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you do not have to worry. Amen? Amen. That's the assurance you need to have. Every step you take, your life being led by the Word of God. And this is the time of worship. You once again remind yourself of that amazing blessing. You know, as children of God, when you pray, you know, God ignores you. Does he do that? That when you pray, is God sometimes asleep? <laughs> All right, he's asleep. <laughs> Right? Beep, beep, beep to, yeah, to set an alarm for God. Like, wake up, God. No. When you pray, God answers every single time. Amen? Amen. You know, I, I gave that message with the children. And one of the girls said, one, one five-year-old girl said, I said, when you pray, God answers all the time. And this girl said, no, he doesn't. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> what, am I, what, what am I supposed to say to this little old girl? Who says, God does not answer every prayer. So I told her, right? No, God answers every prayer, every single time. You know what God said to you? God said, no. He said, <laughs> he said no to your prayers. But sometimes when you're praying with the word of God, what does he say? He says, yes. He says, yes. But sometimes he wants to give you something so much better. So what does he say? Wait, wait. So God answers every single prayer that we give. The only reason why you don't receive answers is what? You are not praying. You're not praying. You're not enjoying this assurance of salvation. You're not enjoying the assurance of guidance. You're not enjoying the assurance of this perfect, absolute answer. Every time you pray, you need to have a certain excitement. Knowing God will answer my prayers. Amen? Assurance of forgiveness is part of the platform of the gospel. Sometimes we are so beat up by the feeling of guilt, feeling of being defeated sometimes because of our own spiritual problem, because of our own failings sometimes. But you know what? It's not because you're doing so great that God gave you salvation. Do you know that? It's not because you're so morally upright that God looked at you and said, you know what? You deserve salvation. What did the Bible say? For all have sinned for short glory of the glory of God. We, none of us are good enough. God, knowing that by His grace, He has saved you. Amen? You are forgiven child of God. Forgiven. When God looks at you, He doesn't see the failures in your life. He doesn't see the problems in your life. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? He sees you are the temple of God indwelt by the Holy Spirit. That's what God sees. And the same thing, that's what Satan sees too. Satan wants to lie to you saying, oh, you're this, you're that, you're nothing. But truthfully, he knows you are a child of God. He knows you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. That you're covered from head to toe by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? This is our true identity. Forgiven child of God. That's why you need to have the assurance of victory. Victory. Assurance of victory. Amen? Amen. This is God's promise in which he has already given The victory is already given to us, guys. Amen? Amen. It is only for us to realize that through worship. Realize the victory we have in Christ in our life. So whenever a problem comes, whenever issues in your life, what do you need to realize? Ah, this is an opportunity God has given me for me to enjoy the victory I have in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? You'll see as time passes by that God has turned the problem into a platform. Amen? Amen? That God has turned the issues in your life as an absolute evidence so that you can glorify God. This is the power of standing on the platform of the gospel. So once again, where are you standing, guys? In what platform are you standing? Unless you are standing on the platform of the gospel, you will lack assurance. Unless you're standing on the platform of the gospel, we will constantly be deceived. I pray to you today that may you truly hold and stand firm on the platform of the gospel. Amen? Today, as we are continuing our study in the book of Luke, we're finally introduced to the role in the ministry of John the Baptist. 
In the main verse, he says, he says, prepare the way for the Lord. This is our title, prepare the way for the Lord. The question is, then how can you live a life preparing the way for the Lord? That's the question I want you to ask. And number one, first thing you have to understand is the content of the evangelist. And before we begin the understanding of the content of the evangelist, like I want to emphasize, the way is already set by Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Don't misunderstand because the title says, prepare the way for the Lord. Jesus has already prepared the way for us. Amen? Amen. It's already been set. The stage has already been set. Only thing you have to truly understand is what he has already accomplished through Jesus Christ. What has he accomplished? As John 19 states, it is finished. What has he finished? As the prophet, priest, and king, he has completely destroyed all of the Satan, sin and curse, and power of hell, completely destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? That means what? Your identity has completely changed. That's the content you must hold. You are no longer belonging to hell, no longer belonging to Satan, no longer belonging to sin. Romans 8.2 reads this. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Lawfully, you are forgiven. Completely done. This is the change of identity you have. Before, you were lawfully sinners. Deserving death and condemnation. Eternal punishment was upon us. Now, lawfully, by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, you have been forgiven children of God. Amen? change of identity this is the content you must hold unless your identity is changed we cannot live a truly happy life i don't know you know what kind of identity you you see yourself as sometimes we see so many identities in ourselves right you're this you're that I'm telling you, the identity you need to hold is what? That I am a saved child of God. Amen? That's the identity you need to realize in yourself. John 5, 24 says, Sarah, very truly I tell you, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. We well, you know what is death. Death means, is it, you know, my heart stopping, no breathing, flat line, beep. Is that death? That's part of death. But true meaning of death is separation. That's what death is. So what is death? Physical death means your spirit has been separated from your body. That is physical death. Then what is spiritual death? Spiritual death, while you may be physically alive, the spirit of God has been separated from your spirit. That is spiritual death. Many people living spiritually dead, physically alive, but they're spiritually dead. But by Jesus Christ, you have crossed over from death to life. The Holy Spirit gives you absolute life. How blessed you, are, you guys are. We need to truly find absolute thanksgiving every single day because of this perfect identity that God has given you. I mean, who deserves this life? Who of you sitting in this room deserves this life? I'm here to say none of you including me, none of us deserves this life. Only by the grace of God, reasons only known to God, he decided, said, I'm going to give you life. Our only response to this amazing life is what? Thank you very much. That I can live this wonderful life of being with God. This is the identity you need to hold on to every single day. That's the content. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. You are a new creation in Jesus Christ. Amen? No longer that person that I used to be. No longer. You may look at yourself like, why am I not changing? I'm still the same person. Why am I not changing? You may ask yourself. Don't be deceived. You are a new creation in Christ. Amen? Amen? only thing left for you to do is realize that and enjoy this amazing blessing. The only reason we're being deceived is because of Satan's deception, because of our spiritual problem, because of the issues in our life. Don't be deceived. God calls you a new creation. Amen? This is the blessing you have. 
the change of identity. This is the content we need to take to the field, guys. People are still stuck in their old identity. Identity of what? Caught under Satan, sin, and hell. To those people, we must relay this content of true life that changes their identity. Amen? Amen. What is the content we need to hold to? Hold to is that you are being set free from sin and curse. What kind of sin? Original sin. Original sin that causes eternal punishment. You have been set free. What kind of sin? Ancestral sin. Ancestral sin that brings about deep spiritual problems in your family and your family line. You have been set free from. Amen? You get to, you know, in Exodus chapter 20, when it talks about the sins of the father being passed down to third and fourth generation. You know what it says in a few verses later? It says, but blessing the faith of the father down to a thousandth generation. Amen? Amen. You are free. The issues in your life, you are absolutely free from. Why? Because of the blessing of Jesus Christ. Consequential sins. What are these are the sins that we do on our daily basis. You are free. Why? Because these are the sins that keeps us from living for the glory of God. The moment you hold to the word of God, the moment you understand your identity, now we get to live our life for the glory of God every single day. Amen? Amen. You know, living for the glory of God is a choice. You know that? Before, we could not. No choice. You do not have a choice. You are born to live for not not for the glory of God, for you are under the curse of Satan. But by the grace of God, we can choose to live our life every single day for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. This is the change of identity that you have. I pray that you would truly enjoy this. This amazing identity. This amazing freedom that you have. Live for the glory of God. What kind of content is also part of this being an evangelist? That your problems of your past, present, future resolved in Jesus Christ. You know, everybody is caught up in their problems of their past, present, and future. Many people are caught up in the scars of their past. Still not resolved. They're still caught by the issues in their past. They're still living in the past. While they're growing physically, mentally, they're growing, but yet they're, spiritually, they're still caught up in their old past of whatever that event may be. You know, I shared with you many times about my past childhood. My scars as a childhood that really grabbed my hold of my ankles and I had to no choice but to live as slave to Satan. That kind of scars of my family that I used to have. Until I realized the gospel, I was slave to those scars. All of my life's decision, every the path I was doing was being dragged by that scar that I have. Until I came to the conclusion of Jesus Christ. No longer am I slave to the scars. Rather, God changed the biggest problem in my life into my biggest evidence. Amen? That's the power of the gospel. Being set free from your scars. Turning it into a platform. Uh, I pray that God will turn your greatest scars and worries into your greatest platform you can use for the glory of God. Amen? All your stress of your present worries right now that you have. What is it? I'm telling you, it's an opportunity. Why is this event causing me stress? Why? Think about it, guys. Why is this event constantly causing me stress? Why? Because of my lack of conclusion in Christ. That's why. God simply helping you to realize that through this pain. You know, we have a body and we have nerves all throughout the body. And if you can't feel pain you're going to have bigger problems, okay? Pain is just an indicator saying, hey, be careful. There's an issue in your life. you got to be careful. Change this life that you're doing, eating hamburgers and pizza, right? There's a certain uh, feedback the body gives. If your body's not giving any feedback, that's a problem. You know, God is using issues in your life to help you, giving you a feedback, telling you what? Hey, you're not having conclusion in my name. The moment you realize it, the moment you conclude in Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, God changes all of the issues as an opportunity for you to experience the power of the gospel. Amen? Amen? That's it. Problems are not problems. You need to understand that. Problems are not problems. 
What is the problem? My lack of conclusion in God. That's the problem. Don't be deceived by the issues in your life. God can resolve it in an instant. Why isn't he doing it then? He wants to use the problem. He wants to use an issue to help you to understand the gospel. I pray that we will truly stand as a witness of the gospel. What about the worries about your future? Why do we worry about our future? Why? Why? Because I don't think I'm good enough. That's why. Why do you worry about your future? Because you, don't, you look at your environment, you look at your situation right now, and you go, oh, it seems, I don't think it's going to be okay. Worries continually develop. Why? Because you're building your future with the worries. You're, you're, you're building upon your future with the physical things of the limited things that you have. Change your future with the power of the gospel. Amen? Build your future every single day, a step at a time, as you enjoy the gospel. You will be building the future with the power of the gospel. If God is in control, guiding you and working in your life, we have nothing to worry about. I pray this is the content of the evangelist that you need to truly understand. Why? Because so many people are caught in their past, present, and future. So many people still caught up in their sin, curse, and Satan. So many people still stuck in the old identity they cannot be set free from. We, as the evangelists, need to proclaim this content of the gospel in the field that God has sent you. Amen? The content of the evangelist that you must understand. Now that we know the content, what is today's point? He wants you to, number two, live out the role of the evangelist. As we said, we're looking at the story of John the Baptist. John the Baptist, the role of John the Baptist as an evangelist. Let's look at it, verse 4 to 6. As it is written in the book of the word of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight path for him. Next week, we'll look into the baptism and actual um, process of what he does. But today, I want you to look at what is the role. He was to be the voice of the Lord. He was to be the voice of God. John, and so many people are coming to John. Many, it says the crowd came to John. It says John, tax collectors came to John the Baptist. Soldiers came to John asking, what shall we do? And he gives them the words. You know, many, many people out there in this world, what do they need to hear? They need to hear the gospel. Unless you become the voice of God, they cannot hear the gospel. Romans 10, 17 says this. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. What kind of words and the gospel do you need to proclaim in the field? The words of that Jesus is the Christ. That's the gospel that we must proclaim. You know, John the Baptist um, died really because he pointed out the wrong of King Herod, <laughs> why did you marry your cousin? <laughs> he, he pointed it out and he got angry. And, and he, So in the kind of the image that people have about John the Baptist is the, a person who points out the wrong of people. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Right? So in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 16, as people, Jesus asks, who do people say that I am? He said, you're like John the Baptist, people say. Right? That's the image that people had about John the Baptist, image people had about Jesus, that he's carrying out the kind of like John the Baptist. What do we need to proclaim, guys? We need to proclaim the one and only true answer that Jesus is the Christ, answer to all your problems. Amen? A gospel content we must have proclaiming the true message of Jesus Christ. Because you are the messengers of God. Verse 15, these, the people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. So people are coming, asking people uh, to John the Baptist, giving them all kinds of answers and in, wondering in their hearts, hey, he might be the Messiah. He might be the Christ. In this way, so many people out there have wrong view of the gospel. They simply don't understand the gospel. What does verse 16 says? John answered them all. I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He quickly corrects their wrong understanding. We are to go to the field and what? 
quickly, correctly proclaim the gospel in the field. Amen. Amen? The wrong understanding that people have. We must go to them. We must proclaim the truth, changing the wrong content that they have. What is our content, guys? That Jesus is the Christ. That's the content. How much of that content of the gospel are we enjoying in our life? We must imprint it, root it, and be natured by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? The answer that changes our lives. There is no other answer. No other answer. We must be the witness of this one and only answer of Jesus Christ. So the role of John the Baptist what? To prepare the way for the Lord. And like I said, continually, Jesus has already prepared the way for us. Amen? Amen. So to prepare the way for the Lord is simply walking the path that Christ has prepared for us. That's it. That's how you prepare the Lord. Meaning, for you to first enjoy what Jesus has already prepared. For you to be the witness of Jesus Christ to all people. All the fields. That's the kind of witness you need to be. When people look at you, they need to really see the power of the gospel in your life. Amen? I pray that you will be a witness of this power of the gospel. That is how you prepare the way for the Lord. Don't be an obstacle along the way of the Lord. Amen? Don't be a wrong turn in the way of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Let us become the way that leads people to the way of the Lord. So today, we're hearing the message called, Prepare the way for the Lord. Therefore, you need to understand the correct content. Therefore, you need to live out your role of the evangelist. What's your role? Proclaim. Know the content. Proclaim the content. Amen? Amen. That's how you live the prepare the way for the Lord. So in conclusion... In doing this important work of the Lord, we must restore spiritual strength. If we are not spiritually strong, we cannot walk the way for the Lord. We cannot prepare the way for the Lord. Um, you know, parents need to be strong. It says, being with a newborn here today, uh, small, tiny baby. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, I remember having my first child as like, Something you can never prepare yourself for. <laughs> they, they, the babies, the newborns, they don't, they don't, they don't listen to you. <laughs> Everything they do when they're, you know, when they're hungry, they cry. They wake up whenever they want, or they're fussy. You know, your life is now centered on their time schedule. <laughs> you know, it's like everything changes. Uh, I remember, you know, in my firstborn, I would wake up with the with my wife and help her. Then then the second one came, I just kind of slept. <laughs> Third one came, it's like everything. <laughs> you know, you got to have strength as a parent. You got to have strength as a parent. And it's the same thing for every one of us, you know, not just the parent. As you live your life wanting to live for the Christ, if you don't have spiritual strength, I'm telling you, it's impossible. Impossible. So you got to gain spiritual strength. And when we're enjoying strength, when we're talking about strength, prayer must be the center of our strength. Amen. Amen. Prayer that is connected to this power of the gospel. Prayer that is connected to the word of God. That prayer brings the establishment of the throne of God where you stand. Amen? That's the experience you need to have. Wherever you go, you experience the establishment of the kingdom of God in your field. Wherever you go. I mean, what's the conclusion of the establishment of the kingdom of God? It is the spiritual change that takes place. Angels, force of darkness being broken down wherever you go. Truly experiencing that. In yourself, in your field, in your church, the kingdom of God being established in your field. Amen? Wherever you go, being filled by the Holy Spirit. Living your life. Connecting everything through prayer, through the word of God, and experiencing the power of the gospel taking place in your field. Amen? Amen? You are called to prepare the way for the Lord. Amen? Amen? A way that God has already prepared. You simply walk that path so that others can truly see how blessed of a path that the Lord has given to us really is. Amen? Amen. You are walking it first so that others can follow. Amen? Amen. Jesus prepared, completed for us. You walk down at first so that others can follow you and truly live their life 
in glorifying God in the path every single day. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message you've given to us. And you bless our brothers and sisters in this place to truly live their life, preparing the way for the Lord, being a witness of this gospel, so that they can be leaders of leading others into this path of this perfect uh, answer that you have given to them. Thank you so much. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.